multiplying polynomials. Multiplying polynomials can be understood through area models. Um, I used to do those until I found that everyone really, really hates them. So I don't anymore. I mean, if you guys really want, I can show you. But again, you have to tell me if that's the case. Two factors can be used as the different side lengths. Yeah, that's just where the rectangle stuff. Um, for the most part, we're just going to be using the distributive property there at the bottom. All that other stuff you can ignore because most people hate it. Okay, well, distribution it is. Sir, is it easier to get involved? Oh, here's how this would work, right? I mean, here we've got two, two numbers that we're multiplying together. Well, area of rectangles is just length times width, right? So, for example, if I drew a rectangle on this, and I said that this side length right here was 5x. This other one's been split, uh, I guess the width or the length, we could say, has been split into two parts, right? We've got the first term, which is 6x, and then the second term, which is negative 4. If I can find the area of these two other rectangles, these two smaller rectangles, then it would tell me the area of the full rectangle, okay? So, for example, if I wanted to solve for the area of this one, I would have 6x times 5x, right? And not that everyone would do this, but you could use the commutative property of multiplication to move these around. 6 times 5 times x times x, which would give you 30x squared. Well, that's our first term, 30x squared. And technically, we're adding these two together. Not that it's going to matter in the end because we're going to change the sign. But on this side, we've got uh, negative 4 length times the width, 5x. And that would give us a negative 20x. So plus a negative 20x. But once again, we don't really have to put plus a negative. We can just put minus. All right. Well, let's use distribution first. So this first, distribute, distributive, whatever. I've got the 5x, and I'm going to multiply that by 6x. Once again, not everyone would show this step, and that's okay. Uh, but that would give me a 30x squared. And yes, I skipped the commutative property on that. Here we've got a minus from this sign right here. So I'm just, uh, I just, I'm just taking 5x times 4. Uh, what? Uh, 5x times 4 which would be 5 times 4 is 20, so 20x. Right, so that, that goes to what an exponent really is. When I have x times x... It's really x plus x. Uh, well, it's x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1. If we used exponent rules, it'd be x to the power of 1 plus 1, which is x squared. Okay. Otherwise, we just say, well, our base is x because that's the number we're multiplying many times. And how many times did we multiply it by itself? Twice. Okay. So, bases and exponents. Okay. 